This one tip can really help you if you plan to do any astrophotography or night shoots when you need to use your eyes when it's dark and especially when it's really cold out there. See, there's a person right there. If you don't know me, my name's Jake and I create content for solo creators on the go. So I test and review equipment here in Alaska and I do tips and tutorials on how to use that equipment so that you can make smart buying decisions and tell better stories. We, and by we, I mean Keith and I, the dark shadowy figure over there, uh, but it might have been a bear. I don't know, it's hard to tell these times of day. We're up here at Hatcher's Pass to do some astrophotography and hopefully some Aurora. But while we're doing that on today's five minutes to better filmmaking and photography, I wanna tell you how you can use red light and things with red light over white light to be able to get better pictures, to be able to be able to shoot better and be able to use your equipment better when you're filming or shooting in the dark like I am right now. Although, good Lord, it's cold. If you're out shooting at night like I am right now, and you're using a white light like I am right now, it can really affect your eyes. And when you wanna be able to see everything around you without having to use light, and especially if you're setting up your camera to be able to do night shots, night time lapses, astrophotography, anything like that, you wanna keep your eyes as used to the night, as used to the dark as you possibly can, especially when you're trying to make sure you can get your shots framed and get everything ready to go. So what I'm doing here is I've got the camera set up with the settings I think I'm gonna use, and I think I have it framed up right, and I think I have it in focus, but we're gonna do a couple of test shots to get it narrowed in. Then I'm gonna format the card and start with a clean slate before we start the time lapse. Pro tip, if you're gonna do this stuff at night, bring a headlamp with a red light instead of a white light, because you will blind your eyeballs if you use a bright white light. So if you have a headlamp or something like this, or a loom cube or a, any other light out there, and it's white, the white makes your pupils dilate down because it reflects a lot more light into your eyes. But if you have a headlamp like this that has red, if I can turn it on here, the red light allows you to see what you need to see, but it keeps the light, it keeps your pupils from dilating way down because of the way our eyes react to red light. So, pro tip, get yourself a headlamp or a light with a red light on it and then keep it at a really, really low luminance. You don't want to have the light turn on super bright either just because it's still amount of light that's going to make your eyes get used to more light. And you want to keep your eyes used to as little light as possible. That's really shining in the camera a lot, so I'm going to just turn it off. Oh my gosh. Is it colder out? Mm, feels colder. Chilly. The breeze yeah. the never breeze. lights up. The northern breeze kicked up and that made it less warm than it was out here. Also, as a bonus tip, if you're gonna do this stuff in Alaska, make sure you bundle up really well with lots of layers because no matter what, it's always going to be cold out. If this night was a total bust, then follow me for other spectacular ways to fail. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you want to see other tips and tricks like this one, short videos like this that will give you five minute tips to better filmmaking photography, click or tap there. I put together a playlist. I'll see you in one of those videos. Uh, it's freezing. I've got a mile and a half hike back. I'm going to go home. I'll see you again soon in the next video. Cheers.